In this video, I'll be going over hypothesis testing, and at the end, I'll relate a little bit to the p-values uh, leading up to tomorrow's video. Hypothesis testing has three different forms that it can take. And so I'm going to go over each form with an example and explain why you put the certain symbols where they are, which is then later used to understand which appropriate test statistic you're looking at. For example, is it a one or two tailed test? That's a very common question in relation to hypothesis testing because it's hypothesis testing that defines that. All right, so let's go into the first one. Your university states at least 90% of students go into the field they studied. You disagree with that claim, and so you take a survey of 100 students that had recently graduated. What is the hypothesis? The null hypothesis would be P greater than or equal to 0.9. And the reason why it's 0.9 instead of 90 is because we're dealing with a percentage. And that's also why instead of mu, I'm using P as the uh, the symbol there. If you're using something that's not a percentage, it's typically mu, but in this case, because we know it is a percentage, we use p. The alternative hypothesis is written as p less than 0.9. And so if you notice here, the equal sign is in the null hypothesis. This would also be considered a one-tailed test because you're only looking at one side as opposed to both sides, and it'll be made clearer as we go on. The next statement is the percentage of truck owners in your town is no more than 15%. You disagree with that statement, and so you take a sample of 100 residents. Write the hypothesis. The null hypothesis will be P, again, because we're dealing with a percentage, less than or equal to 0.15. The alternative is P is greater than 0.15. This is also a one-tailed test. The last statement is, a restaurant says the average wait time on any given day is 15 minutes in their wait room. You disagree and sample 50 people that have dined there. Write the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is written as mu equals 15 minutes. The alternative hypothesis is mu does not equal 15 minutes. Notice here we're using mu because it's not a probability. We're talking about a standard of measurement that is outside of a percentage. This is also a two-sided test. And a two-sided test shows a difference if it's greater than or less than. So it could be 13 minutes, it could be 17 minutes. So that's how you write the different forms of hypotheses. What happens now? All right, so you know that based off what you write, it's gonna be a one-tailed or two-tailed test. How do you know whether you should reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis? That entirely depends on your alpha value and the p-value you get from the test. So depending on what test you're gonna be doing, if it's t, z, chi-square, they're all gonna be giving you different p-values at the end of the day. A quick refresher for alpha values, if you have a 95% confidence for your test, your alpha value is 0 0.05. If your confidence is 0.9, your alpha will be 0.1, and so on. If the p-value is less than the alpha value, you reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than the alpha value, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. You write it in those forms, because you never truly accept either one. And that has to do with the philosophical understandings of, of either one. And I know some people will say accept. Um, that's actually wrong. But uh, this test isn't there to prove one way or the other. It's there to suggest one way or the other. Um, I know that that is going to be a little nuanced for people, but essentially like that's, that's how it is. If your p-value is 0.03, that's less than 0 0.05, and so you would reject the null hypothesis. If your p-value is 0.2 and your alpha value is 0 0.05, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so that's the relationship in, re in regards to the p-value and the hypothesis test. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and stay nerdy, my friends.